today, we will be performing a third occipital nerve radiofrequency ablation procedure. The indications for this procedure include cervicogenic headache and C2, C3 facet arthropathy. Your patient should undergo two positive diagnostic third occipital nerve injections prior to proceeding with radiofrequency ablation. The patient is positioned prone on the fluoroscopy table and a sterile field is prepared with chlorhexidine gluconate, sterile towels, and a sterile drape. The fluoroscope is first positioned in an anterior-posterior view. This allows us to identify the lateral mass of C2 and C3. This can sometimes be difficult to visualize, so we can use the lateral mass of C1 and C2 as a starting position. Once we have identified the facet joint line between the lateral mass of C2 and C3, we angle the fluoroscope to obtain our trajectory view. The image intensifier is tilted caudally to identify the waist of the lateral mass of C2 and C3, which is followed by approximately 30 degrees of ipsilateral oblique. The initial starting position lies immediately lateral to the C2 and C3 facet joint line on the trajectory view. This trajectory will allow us to position the needle parallel to the third occipital nerve. First, I anesthetize the superficial skin with preservative-free lidocaine. Then, I will insert a 20-gauge, 10-centimeter curved RFA needle through the skin. Under continuous fluoroscopic imaging, I am advancing the needle down to the target location. The notch on the RFA needle should always be positioned medially in order to avoid advancing the needle too far anteriorly. At this point, after contacting bone, I turn the notch on my needle laterally, which allows me to walk off bone. Then I turn the notch back to its initial starting position. On the lateral view, the needle is ideally positioned in the midpoint of the C2 and C3 facet joint line posterior to the neuroforamen. At this point, we will perform the sensory and motor threshold testing. I remove the inner trocar from the needle and place the inner radiofrequency cannula, always making sure the needle tip continues to rest on bone. The radiofrequency needle we are using has a one centimeter active tip. The two stimulation strengths we are using are 50 hertz for sensory fibers and 2 hertz for motor fibers. The 50 hertz sensory stimulation is utilized to determine proximity of the active tip to the third occipital nerve. Theoretically, the closer the active tip is to the third occipital nerve, the less voltage is required. My assistant is slowly increasing the voltage till the patient begins to feel either a pressure or buzzing sensation in their symptomatic area of pain. Once they feel that sensation, the required voltage is recorded. At that point, my assistant switches to 2 hertz motor stimulation and slowly increases the stimulation to 1.5 volts, typically at least three times the sensory threshold. As we can see, the multifidi are contracting, but there is no stimulation in the upper limb muscles. On the lateral view, the needle tip remains in the same position posterior to the neuroframen. At this point, I am injecting a one milliliter solution containing equal parts of 1% pr preservative-free lidocaine and 0.9% preservative-free normal saline to decrease the impedance and improve the ionic milieu in order to generate a larger radiofrequency lesion. The thermal lesion is created with a temperature of approximately 80 degrees Celsius being administered over 90 seconds. At this point, the needle tip is rotated approximately 180 degrees. On the lateral view, the needle tip remains in the same position posterior to the neuroforamen. At this point, I create another thermal lesion with 80 degrees Celsius being administered over 90 seconds. At this point, I remove the inner cannula and insert the trocar back into the needle.
Using my initial trajectory and lateral views, I position the needle tip superior to the initial starting position. The needle tip should be positioned at the midpoint of the C2, C3 facet joint line and lie in plane with the C3 superior articular process. At this point, after performing the appropriate sensory and motor testing, as previously described, I inject my one milliliter solution. Then I create another thermal lesion using the same temperature and duration, 80 degrees Celsius administered over 90 seconds. Then I rotate my needle tip approximately 180 degrees and the same process is repeated. Prior to each radiofrequency lesion, a fluoroscopic lateral view shows the needle tip remaining in the same testing position and posterior to the neuroforamen. At this point, I remove the inner cannula and insert the trocar back into the needle. Using my initial trajectory views, I position the needle tip inferior to the initial starting position. On the trajectory view, the needle tip should be positioned below the facet joint line of C2, C3 and rest on the lateral mass of C3, slightly inferior in location. On the lateral view, the needle tip should be positioned at the midpoint of the C2, C3 facet joint line and lie in plane with the most inferior aspect of the C2, C3 neuroforamen. After removing the trocar and reinserting the inner cannula, I perform the appropriate sensory and motor testing as previously described. Then I inject my one milliliter solution prior to creating another thermal lesion using the same temperature and duration, 80 degrees Celsius administered over 90 seconds. We can visualize the one centimeter active tip of the inner cannula which creates the radiofrequency lesion. At this point, my needle tip is rotated approximately 180 degrees and the same process is repeated. Prior to each radiofrequency lesion, a fluoroscopic lateral view shows the needle tip remaining in the same testing position and posterior to the neuroforamen. At this point, I administer a one milliliter solution containing equal parts of 0.25% preservative-free bupivacaine and dexamethasone. The needle is then removed, hemostasis is easily obtained, and a sterile band-aid is placed at the ejection site. At this point, the patient is transferred to a monitored bed and observed for approximately 30 minutes prior to leaving with an accompaniment. The patient should not have any neurological deficits after the procedure, especially in terms of strength testing.